I want to give you the basics of balancing what's called a redox reaction. And this is the flow chart I'm going to walk you through. First, what's a redox quickly? That's when there's an exchange of an electrons. So basically the oxidation states of particular elements are changing. So this will typically be a single replacement reaction, a combustion can be a redox reaction, some combination and decomposition reactions can be combustion. Of course, there can be reactions that are redox that don't fit into any of these categories, but a double replacement reaction is not gonna be a redox reaction. So again, redox, anytime there's exchange of electrons. How do you balance it? Not the same way as we balanced it before, uh, and you can see if you try, uh, it's, it's not going to work out. So you need to follow a particular method called, uh, and what I use is the half reaction method. You split the reactions in half and you put likes with likes. So you put the same elements together on one side and, uh, and one, set of, one reaction and on another reaction called the other half reaction, you put the other reaction, uh, other elements that match. Okay, then you're going to balance each half reaction separately. So there's two reactions, you gotta balance both of them. And there's four steps to go through this part, okay? What's those four steps? Well, first look for whatever's not oxygen nor hydrogen, and then you balance that by inspection. So for example, say you need two aluminums on each side, or whatever that's not oxygen or hydrogen. Then, step two, you balance the oxygens. How do you balance them? Not by putting oxygen in there, but putting water. There's no available oxygen just to pop in there randomly. So you gotta use water. Why? Because this happens in solution and water is readily available and this happen natu happens naturally. Step three, you balance the hydrogen, but not with randomly putting hydrogen in there. You use H plus. Why H plus? Well, because for this method, we're balancing it in what's called acidic conditions and H plus represents acid. So you use the H plus to balance the hydrogen, and finally you balance the charge, not randomly, but by adding electrons, because the charge will be off, and you will need to balance that. You're going to notice in these four steps, sometimes you can skip them. So for example, in some of those half reactions, you won't have oxygen. Don't do that step. Or you might not have hydrogen. Don't do that step. So you're going to be skipping some of these steps sometimes. Just make sure you must go in this order. Now, uh, one more thing about this. Sometimes students, a common mistake is to not, not being sure which side to put the electrons on. Do you put them in the reactants or the products? In every half reaction I've ever seen, the H plus and the E minus, the charge, electron, are gonna be on the same side. So you might wanna write that down. H plus and electrons are most likely gonna be on the same side. And then after you finish each half reaction, you're gonna notice that in one half reaction, the electrons are going to be the reactants. And in the other half reaction, the electrons will be in the products. That's something good to remember. If that doesn't happen, you've messed up somewhere. Okay, then what are you going to do with those half reactions? Where are you going to combine them? And really, this is why we studied simultaneous reactions. Those half reactions are two simultaneous reactions that you have to combine. And the intermediate is the electrons. What does that mean? You better not have electrons left over after you combine those two half reactions. Because electrons are intermediates, they better disappear. Now, that, after you simplify, is going to be what's called the acidic conditions answer. So that means you better see H plus in that answer somewhere. Because H plus represents acid. Now, the question may ask for you to solve this in basic conditions. Because wherever the context is, maybe the reaction happens in a base. So in that case, there's a way that we can mathematically, chemically do that to make it happen. How you're gonna do that is you're gonna locate the H plus in the reaction. And then your say there's four of them. Then to change that up, to get rid of the acid, you're gonna add the, that number of hydroxide ions to each side. So if there's four H pluses, you're going to add four hydroxide to each side. You have to do it to both products and reactants because you have to retain mathematical integrity when you add something to a reaction. Then you're going to use this reaction. Basically, for all the H pluses and OHs that you added together, they're automatically going to turn into water. 
So if you have four OHs and uh, four H pluses and four OHs, you're going to get four waters. Okay? Not, you shouldn't go four H's and four OHs make eight waters. Don't double it. Okay? That's also a common mistake. Then you're going to simplify that, and that's called your basic conditions answer. What does that mean? You better see OH minuses, and you better not see H pluses.